Hello everyone, this is Raheem Palmer from the Action Network, and if you're watching this video, you may be placing a bet on the NBA for the first time ever. Maybe you've had some friendly wagers with some buddies, and this is your first time using a sportsbook. Don't worry about it, we at the Action Network, we got you, we're going to tell you everything that you need to know. The NBA regular season is a grind, not just for players and coaches, but for betters and odds makers alike. There's 30 NBA teams an 82-game NBA season, and a two-month-long postseason. Like any other major market, predicting the outcome of an NBA game is difficult. Even more difficult is to consistently beat the point spread set by odds makers enough to overcome the vig or the juice needed to make a profit. However, there are ways to gain an edge betting the NBA. With the new season here already in the mix and ready to go, there's no better time than now for me to discuss my approach on how I bet the NBA on a nightly basis. One of the best ways to gain an edge when betting NBA games is to start betting as soon as the markets open each morning. Yes, when it comes to the NBA, the early bird gets that worm. If you're on the East Coast, that means you have to be available to bet around 8, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In a market as big as the NBA, nothing slips between the cracks. Injury news, inefficiencies within the market, and lines that are off are quickly corrected as odds makers and bettors get more information on games as we get closer to tip-off. So betting early allows you to capitalize on the mistakes on the initial lines that odds makers release before they're corrected. Betting early also allows you to get better odds than what the line closes at tip-off. To help you out, we've compiled some numbers on NBA point spreads against the closing line the past 10 seasons using information from our Bet Labs database. You can see in the chart, there's a ton of value in getting ahead of the market as your one percentage increases with every half point that betters beat the closing line. Now, there are times when it is advantageous to bet later on in the day. Imagine a game between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Sacramento Kings at the Staples Center in L.A. Since the Lakers have LeBron James and are a popular and public team, you can find more value on backing the underdog Sacramento Kings closer to tip-off. Understand, sports betting is the ultimate multiplayer game. You aren't just competing with just the bookmaker. You're competing with thousands of other sports bettors who are shaping the market with their opinion. Understanding what the vast majority of the public, as well as seasoned professionals, think about a game will allow you to properly read the market and know when it's the best time to time your bets in order to get the best value. Number two, study and react to injury reports. The impact of injuries cannot be understated when it comes to NBA betting. A basketball team only plays five players on the court at one time, meaning one individual player can have more impact on the game than any other team sport. Although you can gain an edge from betting early, sometimes you will find yourself in the dark when it comes to injury news, which comes out throughout the day. My suggestion will be to approach the NBA betting and shifts. Bet in the early morning to get those early line movements, but make sure you're available in the afternoon to stay in tune with injury news and look to bet games where injury could have a significant impact on the game. In the era of low management, it's common for star players to sit out on back-to-back -back games, or sometimes when it's three and four nights. You need to be able to anticipate when players might sit out based on recent play, news reports, and the betting markets. You got to be able to read all three. That's a major, major key. There are slower moving sports books that aren't as quick to react to injury news when moving their spreads and totals, and that's one of the best ways for betters to get an edge. Rule number three, look for scheduling advantages. The NBA's a really long season, 82 games. Guys are flying across the country. They get tired. They go home. They go on road trips. This is one of the best things you can do to gain an edge when betting the NBA. Although the NBA has taken steps to reduce the amount of back-to-backs, NBA teams will average 13 and a half back-to-back -back games with no rest games this season. Although this accounts for less than 17% of their 82 games, there are spots where betters can capitalize on this. In addition, the two-game series is a newer scheduling quirk, which was introduced during the pandemic to reduce the travel during last season's condensed scheduling. There will be 23 two-game series in the same arena this year, 
and there's certainly a advantage to seeing the same two teams play back-to-back. During the 2020-21 NBA season, the team that lost the first game of the two-game series was 27, 14, and 12. That's 65.9% against the spread in the second game of the series. So that's an edge that you can find and hopefully capitalize on this season. Rule number four, to understand NBA totals is to recognize the pace of play. Pace is one of the biggest factors when handicapping totals in the NBA. The number of possessions in a game can determine how high scoring a matchup will be just as much as the team's offensive efficiency. During the 2020-21 NBA season, the Washington Wizards ranked 18th in offensive rating, but were third in points per game at 116.6 because they played at the fastest pace in the league at 106.4 possessions. Calculating pace will provide you with a solid expectation of the number of possessions in a game. There's plenty of questions to ask yourself when looking to play NBA totals. Is this a matchup between a fast-paced team and a slow-paced team? Which team is likely to impose its will stylistically? Are one or both of these teams at the end of a road trip with tired legs? What is the team's strategy coming into this game? If you have a model, you can compare your line to the market line. But you can also look at the recent play of both of these teams and try to figure out if you have an edge or not. Rule number five, capitalize on live betting. Live wagering has become one of the most popular forms of betting as it allows sports fans to place a wager after the game has already begun. What's better than that? Since in-game odds change frequently based on what's happening on the court, bettors can use the ever-changing odds to their advantage. They can capitalize on the volatility of a game. They can set up arbitrage or middling opportunities or even hedge previous bets to make a profit. The models and algorithms that sportsbooks use to create live lines are only as good as the information being put into them. And there's a ton of new information received after the game already starts that we didn't have before that algorithms just aren't going to pick up on. Here are some basic rules for live betting that are key to your success. Bet only during commercial breaks and stoppages. Capitalize on the pricing mistakes due to bad data. Live bet injuries as the algorithm isn't likely to pick up on every injury from every player on the team. If it's a non-star player, the odds might not even move, but you can capitalize on that. Calculate possessions for live betting totals. Capitalize on the volatility. As the cliche goes, basketball is a game of runs. Finally, learning rotations is the key to success. Some teams have better benches, so you want to be able to capitalize on that. Rule number six, do not tease the NBA. Teasers are only reserved for the NFL. Don't tease the NBA. Don't tease college football. Don't tease college basketball under any circumstances. NFL teasers have value because an NFL game typically contains around 12 possessions. Teasing a game six points accounts for nearly one touchdown and gives you enough room for each teaser leg to cover 72.3%, the threshold needed to break even. NBA games, on the other hand, have an average of about 100 possessions, so teasing a spread four points is just two possessions, which could be covered in less than a minute or some free throws. There's just no value. There's simply too many possessions in a basketball game for it to be worth it to tease it. To break down the math, take a look at a standard two-team four-point teaser, which are priced at minus 110 in basketball. Adding four points to a team spread gives a team a 66% chance of covering, far below the 72.3% threshold that you need to break even. Fair odds on such teasers are closer to plus 130, but you're still paying minus 110, which would give you a negative expectation long term. Number seven. Always, always, always line shop. Line shopping is important for any sport. Always have access to multiple sports books. This could drastically alter your win rate over the course of the year. It can add dollars to your bank account. We're only loyal to our bank role. We don't care about being loyal to these sports books. If one sports book has the Milwaukee Bucks at minus three and a half, and the second one has it, the Milwaukee Bucks at minus three, and we like the Milwaukee Bucks, we're going to the second sports book because we want to increase our win rate. We want to get the best of the number and it could drastically impact 
your win rate. As I said earlier, a half point is huge in NBA. The same is true for the VIG. Some sports books have a spread or total listed at minus 120. Some of them might have it listed at minus 110. To break even at minus 110 odds, you need to win 52.38% of the time. To break even at minus 120, you need to win 54.5% of the time. That's a 2.12% edge. That's a lot of money going out your bank account. If you bet in minus 120, you can get minus 110. As always, you can find the most updated line for any game by checking out the Action Network's NBA odds page. Always get the best of the number. Always line shot. Our last and final rule for you guys is to track your action. One of the best things you can do to become a profitable NBA better is to track your wagers in the Action Network's award-winning app. Everything from money lines to totals to props. Our app will give you your return on investment and record for every different wager type. It'll allow you to recognize patterns, your strengths and weaknesses, and let you know where you should be focusing your energy when wagering on the NBA. But also, check out the Buckets Podcast with Matt Moore, Brandon Anderson, and yours truly, Raheem Palmer. Action Network, y'all know how it's going down.